Ever since it was announced that Martin Scorsese would be making a new gangster movie, there were those who felt like this would be a waste of time, as he would simply retread old ground and not tackle anything new. I made a video in response to this, called Another Martin Scorsese Gangster Movie, Is It Necessary?, where I argued in favour of why another Scorsese mob picture wouldn't just be tackling old ground. One of the reasons I feel this to be the case is that The Irishman will be the most mature gangster film of Scorsese's career, and there is a lot of evidence to support this. For starters, Scorsese has said in the past that he isn't too interested in hyper-violence anymore, in showing how brutal the mafia can be, as he explored this in Casino with the Desert Execution. He's also mentioned on numerous occasions, as recently as this month, that The Irishman is a film that could only have been made now, in regards to where Scorsese and De Niro are in their lives. This is partly because the two are old men, who haven't worked together in decades, along with Joe Pesci, and the film is something of a tribute to the kind of films that made them famous, and the plot of the film also reflects this. And Goodfellas, after all the hullabaloo and after the fact that Henry sent his closest associates to jail after being within an inch of having his life taken away, all he can think about in the witness protection program is how great the life was and how much he misses it. He hasn't grown up in any way, he hasn't become a better person, and he's still just as scummy and ungrateful as he always was. In Casino, there's a hint of introspection and reflection in the character of Sam Ace Rostein, who faces a better ending than most protagonists of Scorsese films, but other Scorsese characters like Johnny Boy, Frank Costello and Jordan Belford never seem to learn from their wicked ways, never seem to face it in any way and come to terms with it. This is where The Irishman is different. Yes, there will be mob hits. Yes, there will be beatdowns and people calling each other cocksucker. In fact, a portion of the film, namely where Frank Sheeran is inducted into the mob and learns the ropes, could be seen as a recap of Goodfellas. But after the killing, the drinking, the money collection, after these guys have ruled their territories, taking what they please in life, something happens in The Irishman that hasn't happened in any other Scorsese crime flick. The characters grow old. After their thirst for power, money and killing dwindles, they grow white hair, wrinkles appear around their faces, and their egos deflate as they reflect on their actions throughout life as they now have one foot in the grave. This is where the film gets really interesting, as even in real life, the hitman Frank Sheeran turned towards his religion, seeking absolvement for his sins, and even mob boss Russell Buffalino, one of the most powerful La Cosa Nostra figures, became a regular church attendee in his twilight years. They began thinking about death, and about all the sins they had committed, wondering if the pain and loneliness they were feeling in their life was punishment for their actions in their prime. It ties in well with the themes of Catholic guilt and redemption that are so common in Scorsese's films, and it's the old man Sheeran segments of the movie that are truly the heart of the film. In other movies, gangsters have killed people who were close to them without batting an eyelid, but in this film, the murder of an associate is the main premise of the film, and how the guilt of the man who did it destroyed him internally. The Irishman contains something of an extended What Happened Next segment, showing how all the characters ended up, and for most, it's not good. There are also other elements that seem way more mature than past Scorsese films. Profanity is seen by many as juvenile, angry outbursts as a weakness and a showcase of one's inability to remain control of one's feelings. And it describes perfectly Joe Pesci's characters in Goodfellas and Casino. And in the first film, he played a low-ranking mobster, and in the second he was a much higher up guy, but constantly at odds with his bosses. In this one he is the boss, one of the most powerful around, and it may surprise you to learn that there is no profanity attributed to Buffalino in the script of the film I read, and very little, if any, in the book the film is based on I Heard You Paint Houses. In fact in the book there's only one scene where it's suggested he used a curse word. In spite of his reclusiveness and quiet demeanour, 
Buffalino is the top dog in The Irishman, and the role is a far cry from the ones we're used to seeing from Joe Pesci. Here he will have to rely on subtlety and nuanced mannerisms to portray his anger, as opposed to raising his voice and swearing. Other things I noticed from the script was one scene which showed Frank Sheeran cheating on his wife with a waitress. How would Scorsese have done this in previous movies? In Goodfellas, Henry is doing a line of coke whilst simultaneously caressing his girlfriend's bosom. In Casino, we get up close and personal with Nicky and Ginger's action. And in The Wolf of Wall Street, he takes things a step further by having Jordan Belford discovered by his wife doing a line of coke on his girlfriend's bosom. But how does the Irishman deal with such a scenario? From the script, all we see is De Niro and a waitress walking down the street and disappearing around the corner. Everything else is implied. So as you can see, not only is the movie going to be tackling things and exploring themes Scorsese has never done before, like old age, the manner in which the film will tackle things is also mature. This is one of the things I think separates the Irishman from most gangster films. In many, the main character is dead or in prison or just too embroiled in the criminal lifestyle to get a chance to reflect and regret. How many times have we seen a gangster film where this actually happens and is explored deeply? You have Michael Corleone as one example. And the only other one I can think of off the top of my head is Sergio Leone's masterpiece Once Upon a Time in America. And if Scorsese's film reaches anywhere near the heights of that movie, we are in for a real treat. Thanks for watching.